It's not bad, Nigel. Welcome to Rise to Meet You, a comedy podcast with me, Nigel Ung. And me, Evelyn Mock. Hey, episode 77, people. Okay. How's it going? I know I've just been, I, I know we should move on, but I mean, I just have to let you guys know, listeners, like Nigel is so loud and I have forgotten my headphones today, so it might like influence how it, I'm hearing it. And or it's because we've been apart for so long. No, it's not a part thing. You're so loud. You never comp. Last time we were, okay, we are in Sweden today in Stockholm yeah, but we'll get Sweden. there in a bit we'll get yeah, there in a bit yeah, yeah. when you came to my flat like uh-huh. months after we did remote stuff uh-huh. you didn't complain I was too loud yeah because yeah. you had your headphones our, our headphones block out outside noise so all you hear <laughs> is me through the headphones <laughs> but now Evelyn doesn't have her headphones on I so know. now she's hearing me just kind of yelling at her yeah. from her perspective what I'm hearing is nice and what what it will, I will sound on the podcast, but Emily feels I'm yelling. He's shouting like this is my this is how I'm like uh, experiencing you. Hi everybody, this is Nigel. Ba 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 ba. I'm not changing a <laughs> single thing compared to a regular episode. Okay, you you forgot your headphones. I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why are you bitching when you <laughs> fucked up? You <laughs> fucked up, and now you are bitching. My God. You, I, just, I locked this luggage. I locked all this shit, people. <laughs> yeah. All this shit through the airport. 30 kilos. I had to pay excess baggage fees. What? Yeah. Why didn't you tell? I mean, we could have. I could have totally just brought my downscaled stuff from Gothenburg. No, we need to make it professional and nice. Oh, gosh. Okay? It's just excess luggage. It's fine. It's fine. Well, we... We got to Stockholm. I got to Stockholm two days ago, uh-huh. and it's been it's been fun. I've seen like um, two restaurants so far. Nigel because... doesn't want to see any tourist stuff. No, because I'm I'm too busy editing. He's editing still, and you brought Huel. Like who brings Huel? Of course, on a I bring Huel. It's Europe. Food here is expensive, and the portions are small. I need. I can't <laughs> starve. It's Europe. Huel is made for the European. People who travel to Europe. He was saying, you were saying you brought Huel because you needed to maintain your abs. I mean, that's yeah, that's saying. part of it. To maintain my abs, I need a high level of protein and oh, uh, enough car- uh, enough calories. You know? So why blame me? I just bl- blame the expensive food here. I'm not blaming you. I'm just pointing out how great ludicrous you are. Why is it ludicrous? I bring <laughs> Huel everywhere I go. It's so weird. How is that weird? To want to look good. Don't you want to look good? Yeah. Try bringing Huel to places. See how that changes your life. Oh my god. It saves me so much time. You know, we got we get free breakfast at the hotel today, but I had yeah. a lot of editing to do for this week's Uncle Roger video, which is Uncle Roger works at a food truck. Mm-hmm. So I just woke up. I didn't have time to chew. So I just drank Huel. You didn't have time to chew? <laughs> yeah, I know breakfast was down there, but I got to wait for the eggs to be made. I have to chew. So I just, okay, let me just... Get a coffee, come back up, drink my Hugo while editing. That's my life now. Oh my god! Okay, content creator life, people. Honestly, I think you're gonna burn out like so soon if you if you keep going like this. No, I have an Asian upbringing. You know? <laughs> we do burn out. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. our threshold is a lot higher than yeah, white that's people's true. burnout that's threshold. True. White people's burnout threshold is like completing two tasks. <laughs> They, they go to the post office, then they go to the grocery store. Oh my god, I need to go for a spa day now. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's very right? true, yeah. That's what I feel most of the time. So you have like, white uh... people burnout threshold. <laughs> I have Asian people burnout threshold. That's because, and that's true, because at this hotel, I was like, can I get a room with a bath? Because I want to take baths at the end of the day. And Nigel has just a shower because he's efficient. What do what do you do that makes you require a bath? You were meeting friends yesterday. Well, I, yeah, I was meeting friends. Does that stress you out? Meeting friends. It does. Yes, it does. Social anxiety, very stressful. Um, but what do you think of Stockholm? I like it. It's nice. It's very quiet. Yeah. And it feels like COVID doesn't exist here. Yeah. Nobody yeah. wears a face mask. <laughs> Right, our, our videographer Yang, uh, who came along with us, yeah. she's shaking her head behind the camera. Yeah, and yeah. it's like it's because like uh, what was it? I was um, 
Uh, if you wear a face, uh, if you wear a face mask here, people think you're weird. Yeah, like they look at you very strangely, especially if you're lot, Asian. I got a lot of strange looks. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I, I I just don't wear a face mask anymore. You yeah. know, I, I try to sanitize my hands and wash my hands. But yeah. you got to fit in with society, you know. Yeah, you do. Like my, what was it? I met my Swedish agents yesterday, and uh, they were like, "Yeah, I mean, a lot of people think that Sweden hasn't changed anything, but there have been a lot of restrictions made." And I'm like. No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, we're out in a coffee shop right now with a bunch of people. We all hugged each other. Yeah, it's they not... still shake hands. Yeah. <laughs> they still yeah. hug. It's like, cool it. I don't know you yet. <laughs> oh, that's But, so funny. Yeah, the trip here was fine. Although, uh -huh. when I, I flew out from Heathrow, right? Yeah. And Heathrow has a lot of international flights. Yeah. And I realized, like, African people and Asian people, yeah. we have a lot of the same uh, airport habits. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Because I got there at noon, two hours before my flight, right? Uh -huh. But I think my flight was at two. Uh -huh. And then later that day, there was flights to like Nairobi, to Johannesburg, you know, African cities. Uh -huh. They all have like seven bags to check in. <laughs> and they're all plastic wrapped. They're all plastic wrapped. They're all <laughs> plastic wrapped. That's, that's, that's Asian people too. Yeah. And that's you. That's, that's me. you. That's me. They're all thinking. We talked about this a few episodes ago, yeah. right? Yeah. They're all thinking, I don't want to pay money for storage. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to yeah. pay money for storage. Let's bring seven bags with me to Africa. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why the queues are so long because they got there six hours before their flight. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> And then I'm standing in the queue, and in front of me is just families with like seven or eight big bags to check in. Yeah. And we're all like, oh. and then it, the people, uh, the flight in two hours was like to like Copenhagen, to yeah. Stockholm, white European countries. And then you can see like just, just white people getting called ahead to jump the queue because the the people running the queue in the airport was like, okay, your flight's in two hours. We gotta get you. We gotta get you first. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> just got white people and me to jump the queue. Which doesn't look good in, yeah, in terms of optics. Yeah, it doesn't look good. doesn't look good, Heathrow. It doesn't look good. Look good. Yeah. <laughs> But it's because yeah. the the African families were there too early. Yeah, basically. yeah. But, but Asian people get there super yeah, early too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, like three, four hours ahead <laughs> yeah. of time. And then it's like they just sit inside in the duty-free and just like wander the duty-free. But don't buy anything. Yeah. <laughs> They don't buy anything, but they like they get there early because they need to go to like the tax free part. You yes, know what I yes, say? Yes. <laughs> that's what my, I realize. That's what my family does. They save all the receipts that they've bought from everything they've bought in Sweden, and then they go to the airport super early and they go to the tax free to claim the tax free. And also sometimes like we'll get them to buy, we'll get them to take receipts with them, and then they'll claim the tax free and then give us back the receipts oh. so that we can get the so the things we've bought. We can get the tax back. <laughs> That's Asian families. Wow. That's a good idea, actually. Have you not done I've that? I've never done that. <laughs> we do it all we, the time. Well, we, we, well, I grew up in Malaysia. We don't really do that VAT claiming back. Uh, we don't have such a yeah. high VAT rate. Oh, that's right. Because yeah. it's Malaysia. <laughs> Over here is 20%. Of course, they're going to claim back yeah. a fifth of your money. <laughs> that's a great idea. Yeah, that's, that's what Asian family do. Let me, like people, if your family does this, let us know in the comments. Because I bet, at least in Sweden, I bet several Asian families do that. Ah, that's, that's such smart. a funny that's thing. Smart. Yeah. Oh, it was so ingenious. I wonder <laughs> if African families do that. Probably, probably. Oh, probably. Yeah. yeah, like everything we do, they do it, seems. The plastic wrap luggage. <laughs> Getting early to the airport. Yeah, using plastic bags. It's not what's killing the sea turtles. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the plastic Asian wrap. and African families wrapping up seven pieces of checked in luggage <laughs> with saran wrap. And then when they get to a destination, they cut it out and throw it into the ocean. And now, and now a seagull's wrapped in plastic, you know? Yeah. Oh, poor seagull. It's so funny because it's like they don't want to damage the luggage. And like I recently damaged my carry-on because I've had it for like six years and I've, I use it constantly. And the wheels are bad now. Uh -huh. And my mom is so angry with me because she's like, why have you broken your luggage? You just don't treat it well. You keep dragging it. Why aren't you carrying it? And I'm like... It's I've it's usage like I've yeah. used it, mom. It's wear and tear. It's wear and tear. And six years it's, is a long life. Exactly. For like she expects me to carry it, you know, like treat it like it's like a diamond or something. <laughs> where where is it from? Is it a branded piece of luggage? Yeah, it's American Tourister. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Get 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 the silver ones. It's trendy with Asian people now. The silver heart ones. The uh, Remova. I really want it, but yeah. it's expensive. Get it. All so Asians expensive. have it. 
We gotta keep up the Asian appearances. We gotta keep it up. Yeah. But it's like, so expensive. Just get one. Okay. You use it okay. so much. You travel so much. Filming Spider Man. Filming you know? Spider Man. <laughs> For that one little scene that I was in. Yeah. Do you know at the end of that filming, like, um, we were gonna go off set and like on film sets there's a really big hierarchy. You're not supposed to talk to mm-hmm. like the people who star in it. But I took a like a shot and I, I just said bye to Tom um What's his name? Tom Holland. Tom Holland. I just said bye to Tom Holland. And uh, he was like, oh, uh, yeah, bye. And then as soon as I said that, I felt so proud of myself. And then I tripped on a wire. And I was like, ah. And then he was like, oh, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs> well, Stock- Stockholm's nice. Yeah. And then one thing I'll say about this city, it's impossible to get condoms. For some reason, your, your country, you don't sell... It was very hard to get condoms. Okay, guys. Okay. 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 Oh, my God. Well, why Why okay. is it so hard? Is they, okay, in, in, in the UK, it's just on a shelf. You just go into Tesco or Boots and you just, just, just pick it off the shelf. Okay. This is the story. As soon as Nigel got off the plane, he was late to meet me and my friend for dinner. And then he comes through the door and he's like, Evelyn, there... Aren't any, do you know any pharmacies or like anywhere that's open, like a, like a corner shop or anything? And I'm like, yeah, 7-Eleven. And he's like, yeah, they don't have it there. And I'm like, what, what, what do you mean that? Oh, (laughs) and this is how in sync we are. This is how well we know each other. I'm like, what does he mean that they don't have it there? And what, why does he want to go to a pharmacy? And I'm like, ew, you want to buy condoms? Why is condoms ew? It's a responsible thing to buy. It's a but why? Like you're you've come here to a different country. Because I need it for you know later. Oh, which is like, what are you expecting? I expect condoms to be in shelves of shops, like any other developed or developing country. But there's a whole process here, isn't there? There's a whole plot. So, okay. So I'm like, oh, okay. You want, okay. I get what you want. We, oh, okay. And so I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll, we'll go and get it later. And then after dinner, I take him to uh, like a, just a supermarket, like yeah. a Sainsbury's. And I'm like, okay. So, because and this is how we know I don't buy them because I also didn't know where to get them. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, I think they're down this aisle. It's two people with no condom knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Flailing around Stockholm. Just a foreigner. Condoms, condoms, where are they? A foreigner and a lady riddled with anxiety. Just like, and we walk into this, like, we just walk into this shop. And I'm like, yeah, Nigel, I think they're over there. And I just point to, like, the sanitary, like, yeah. hygiene. It's just toothpaste. You pointed to toothpaste. <laughs> to toothpaste and you come and you're like they're not there Evelyn and I'm like oh okay and so we head to the register and I'm like oh that's right because in Sweden like tobacco and like sensitive stuff like that like condoms or anything intimate they keep it in a vending machine right outside the register because I think people steal it a lot of times and so to get to that vending machine you have to go to like this little kind of computer screen and you have to choose the item you want and they print you a ticket and so you take that ticket, you pay for it, and then you put that ticket into the vending machine um, and you get the product you need. And so I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we saw that little kind of computer thing at the thing. And I was like, Nigel, it's here. Yeah. And so they have pictures of condoms and everything. And so I was like, it'll be easy oh, for him to do himself. Yeah. But the brands and the, the, the description are all in Swedish. They were right? all in Swedish. So I was like, ah, and it's not even Durex. It's a sort of weird Swedish brand. And then it's, and I, so I had to translate yeah, for him. I know. I, I do know that I don't need the ones that say grande. That's what <laughs> I know. Oh, it's so gross. <laughs> but then he was like, Evelyn, which one do I get? And I'm like, I can't believe this is happening right now. I'm translating condoms why? for you. Yeah. Like, what, what is why, happening? Why are you treating this as such a weird thing? We, we have two adults here. Yeah, but like, it's just, I'm like, this is such a, weird scenario the first night you come to my country i'm like oh i'm gonna show nigel around we're gonna have a nice time have dinner with my friend la 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 and then all of a sudden we're in a store trying to get him condoms because he wants to get laid and so we stand there and i'm like oh well i mean and i can't just try i'm like 
this one's the most popular, Nigel. This one. How do so you just know? This how, one. how do you know, by the way? <laughs> how do you know? I had sex ed. I oh, had sex ed. What, 10 years ago? So yeah. you think condom brands never, <laughs> yeah, no. there's no developments? <laughs> there's no developments. Things are big 10 years ago, still big now. <laughs> yeah, no developments. <laughs> and so I'm like, just get this one. And so Nigel gets it. And he's like, I don't know how many are in the packet. <laughs> I don't know how many. I'm like, I mean, I don't know either because it doesn't say. I thought it was going to be three. Or three yeah. or six. Yeah. But they so. <laughs> So the thing is, he got so he got the ticket, and then we go to the register, and he scans it, and then he accidentally scans it <laughs> twice, and I'm like, oh my god! So now we need a th- we need a third person involved yeah. to like cancel one of them, and I was like, you know what? No, this is too much, Nigel. Just get another one. So we go and get another ticket. So he has two tickets now, and he still thinks like he's like, okay, well that's good. Then at least I'll have six condoms or something, yeah. and then. <laughs> And then the thing is, like, we needed somebody to come and approve it because you need to be over 18 to buy it, I think, or something like that. And so they come and they approve it and they just see these two, like, <laughs> these two lun- lunatics just, like, <laughs> me just being too embarrassed. Too and I just being, yeah. With face so, masks yeah. on. <laughs> and I just, yeah, exactly. Just be trying to figure out this, like, register. And it's, like, me being too embarrassed and Nigel just being really confused. <laughs> And then the lady who comes is a middle-aged lady and she's like, oh, you want this? Um, Okay. And then she just hands it to her colleague and she's like, yeah, just go and get him two of these. <laughs> like she's embarrassed as well. And then the guy goes and then Nigel, what were you saying? Because you were like, oh, I can't believe, why is it so complicated yeah. to get condoms yeah. here? Blah, blah, blah. And then the guy who comes back, he's like, yeah, because this is worse than drugs. <laughs> and like he makes a joke and hands it to Nigel. And I'm like, this is so embarrassing. And then when we walk out, you open the packet and it's like 10 <laughs> condoms in it. <laughs> so Nigel bought 20 condoms. The first night in Sweden. The first night in Sweden. And you're here for 10 days. So it's like. Hey, that just means two a day. You know? <sighs> Doable, maybe. But. <laughs> why, why, two things one why uh, why is it such an embarrassment you know condoms it's just a normal thing to get why is this whole stigma and embarrassing uh, embarrassment around sexual health you know i don't like it no it is i mean sweden is very liberal and very like i mean obviously yeah, sweden's very, liberal but you're not yeah not you're me, like you're condoms not really. oh my oh no yeah. <laughs> no but it's just like so gross condoms no it's just like I'm going to help you get condoms. Like, I just feel like what I am an assistant to your dick. Like, what is this? I just need a translation help. (laughs) And two, why do they store all this stuff away? It's like buying condoms in Sweden is like like if Argos sold condoms (laughs) and Argos is a shop in the UK where they have nothing on the shop floor. It's just a brochure. So you go in the shop and then type it. You look through the, the thick-ass thousand-page brochure, yeah. type in the number, and then you take the ticket and wait yeah. until a number gets called out like at McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, and then they hand you the thing you bought. Yeah. Why, why is this all this song and dance about buying condoms? I mean, it's supposed to make it more efficient. <laughs> wow, just, really? Yeah, it's just, it's just that you don't understand Swedish and I've never bought condoms. <laughs> You're like the worst <laughs> condom shopping assistant. Yeah. I can't be your condom shopping assistant. <laughs> Who else can? I don't know anyone else in Stockholm. <laughs> oh, it was very funny, but it's because I'm like I, I'm not good at like flirting and stuff, and so I've I've always received my condoms for free as well. From always, guys? No, from like, cl- sexual clinics? health clinics. Yeah, I don't know how I get them for free, but I just get them. like once I got them in london at wood green library it was like uh they had a little table there promoting uh lgbtq week like pride week and they were handing out free condoms and a guy just gave me a bag and so i just have that just buy some (laughs) it's it's nice it has many flavors and textures oh my god shapes and sizes colors you know I can't. Uh, I I don't think. Yeah, I'm at least I'm them. trying to meet new people and put myself out there. You no, know, try to find happiness or whatever you call that. I try dating. You don't try. <laughs> I try a little. No, you don't. No, <laughs> I've seen your DM game. It's weak. Oh, it's very weak DM game. I just went through my DM game last night. It's bad. It's bad. 
but I don't know how to tell if somebody's flirting. Well, you can always initiate. You need to push it towards that direction. Okay? So when a guy says, uh, you know, Evelyn was texting this guy from Amer- America, and he was like, yeah, I, I've been stationed in the UK before. I've, I go to London a lot. You know, I have, I've worked there. You know, so he's already finding common ground with you. So what's the next step you do? Send him a meme? <laughs> it's a wrong move. I didn't reply. Yeah. <laughs> the next step you do is that he, he's put himself forward. Then go up to meet him. Say, next time you're in London, like, hey, with two Ys. Always hey with two Ys. If you're yeah, Nigel was saying this yesterday. Yeah. Hey with two Ys. Hey with two Ys. If you're ever in London and need a place to crash, hit me up. Winky face. All right, done, what? done. Then he knows you're trying to flirt. Then if he flirts bad, then you are on. But then I don't. But then what if he actually comes and then he's like, "Hey, can I stay with you?" And you I'm just like, say I you're don't, busy. No, I don't just want say that. you're in Gothenburg or Stockholm. Use these guys as target practice. As target practice. Yeah, because you you need it. You oh need it. God. Okay. I guess that's. I mean, because I had like there was a dude that I I'm. I was maybe am interested in and he like one of the <laughs> he said this to me he was like oh you're Chinese I thought you were Korean um yeah because my two previous girlfriends were Korean and I was like why <laughs> why is the worst word to use when you're trying to flirt with someone <laughs> can like, you imagine oh I really like your eyes they're really pretty and then you go why? Yeah, why? Why are they pretty? Why? Tell me. They're just black. <laughs> like my soul. Don't say why, please. But why did he say that? It was weird. It's a weird thing to say. It's a weird thing to say, but, you know, turn it to advantage. Say, so, you have a thing for Asian girls, huh? Oh, that's so cringe. You got, you put... That's what flirting is. Flirting is cringe to everybody not in the flirting group. Is it really? Yeah. But what if he wasn't flirting and then I just say, said that and it's like, yeah. I mean, then he'll stop talking to you anyway. So that's okay. <laughs> so you end up at square one anyway. So what, what are you losing? You want that's to have true. children one day, right? So, you know, you chop, chop. Your eggs are shriveling. But like, I have intimacy issues. You need to move on, Evelyn, because like it or not, your eggs are shriveling. What do you mean? And that? I know, listen, listeners, I know it's not a thing you say to peop- uh, people of the female gender, okay? It's not a nice thing to say. It's a very sexist thing to say if, if you don't know the person. But in our context, this is me trying to motivate and encourage Evelyn because, because yes, you have intimacy issues, you have anxiety issues, and you I go have, to therapy. I have yes. trust issues. Okay, you have, have trust, trust issues. issues. And you're, yes, you're going to therapy for that, which is very useful. Mm-hmm. But as a therapist, you just talk about... They just go, tell me how you feel. Tell me how you feel. I'll tell you how your eggs feel. Shriveled. Nigel. Okay? So chop, chop. Therapy is important, but you got to move fast. <laughs> you, either, you either start getting out there or freeze your eggs. Choose one. Oh, my God. I'm just pre- presenting you solutions to your problem. So what's, this, what's the solution? Start dating or freeze your eggs. Start option A, option B. <laughs> Multiple choice question. No more talking about feelings. Feelings can come later. You can freeze your eggs first, then talk about feelings all you want. <laughs> what? But then I, if I freeze my eggs and I still don't work through my issues, then my eggs will remain frozen forever. But they'll, oh. still, they'll, they'll still work. Oh, that's a very, very poignant metaphor, isn't it? <laughs> it's not a metaphor. It's just very literal. The eggs will be there. For, I mean, yeah. It is very little, but uh, literal, but also metaphorical because they'll remain frozen forever if I don't work through my issues. I mean, tons of people have issues and still have kids too. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So, and those kids grow up to be comedians. <laughs> yeah. Is that such a bad thing? <laughs> is that such a bad thing, people? You enjoy this podcast, right? Uh, Both our parents probably had us when they had issues. Yeah. So is that such a bad thing to not solve every single mental illness you have? <laughs> is it such a bad thing to not have therapy? Let me let me pose this question. Without without issues, this podcast wouldn't exist. Oh my god. So is it such a bad thing? Do you really need to work through every single issue? Maybe work through like fifty percent of issues, you know? <laughs> like 
I know you have trust issues and intimacy uh, issues. Okay, work through intimacy well, issues maybe and not, leave the trust issues intact. Yeah, maybe not intimacy issues, but I have trust issues because I realized, like, I think, like, I was getting attention from from um, a person, and then I was like, <gasps> like, oh no, what what's the what's the agenda? What's the hidden agenda here? I'm trying to fuck you. What's the, what what else? <laughs> what else? Men are simple. What are you thinking? This is not chess. Our brain is like one piece. <laughs> There's no knight or rook or castle. There's no castling when when we're trying to have sex. Like, doo, 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 doo. That's so, it. There's only a king trying to get to a queen. Yeah, you are thinking like chess. We are thinking more like like snakes and ladders. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to this square. Let's get to this square. <laughs> Oh no, there's a ladder. <laughs> oh well, let's start over. <laughs> oh, lo, lo. <laughs> there's no ulterior motive. Oh, uh, that's very funny, Nigel. <laughs> what are you thinking so much of? What okay, what what went through your head? I mean let me try to translate it. Let me try to translate it and try to appease your fears. Well, okay, so um it was just like, oh, is this person interested? But then I was like, but that doesn't make sense because people are usually not interested in me. And so it can't be and this person feels like like we're vibing but at the same time it's like it it doesn't feel like it's a, like it just was i just can't i just can't trust that they're i just can't believe that they're interested in me why because such low self esteem <laughs> historically yeah. well i think it's because of um things that have happened to me in the past see you always you always use this i feel like this this the seven-year toxic friendship thing has become like a crutch for Evelyn. You know, well, Evelyn, why did you achieve more in life? Well, for seven years, I had a toxic friend. <laughs> Evelyn, why why haven't you, uh, you know, finished your script? Well, for seven years, <laughs> I had a toxic friend. <laughs> Evelyn, you fucked up dyeing your hair. Why is it so bad? Well, for seven years. <laughs> I had a toxic friend. <laughs> Maybe I'm my own toxic friend. You are your own toxic friend. You overthink. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll th- put myself out there. Yeah, pull yourself out. Yeah. Go fuck some people. I don't want to. F- okay. Uh, okay. Well. Okay. Listen. Self esteem always came very naturally to me, so I might not be able to help <laughs> with that. But next time uh-huh. you sense any sort of interest, just assume they want to fuck you. Just assume. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit delusional, but it'll correct itself eventually. You need to lean all. You need to go the other direction. Okay. So every time someone expresses interest, they. they Accidentally touch your hair. Oh, he wants to fuck me. You know, he buys you a coffee. He wants to fuck me. <laughs> you got to think that for like a few months and then you correct yourself back to normal eventually. Is that what you do? I mean, that, that's what I hear in my head every day. Anyway, so. <laughs> oh, did she, does she work at a, she served me coffee. Does she work at a coffee shop? Yes, but I think she's still interested. So let's, <laughs> let's go get some condoms. Let's go to the vending machine, get some condoms. Let's go to the vending machine and get Evelyn to translate for me. Yeah. And get some condoms. And no, get you... 20 condoms. I'm going to use them all. I'm going to use them all. <laughs> I don't doubt that you already have. I haven't used that many. Oh. But, uh, well, I haven't used that many? Oh, Nigel. What? You're making me out to be like a slut here on the podcast, you know? Yeah, and you're making me out. Actually, I'm making myself out to be a very uh, uh, scared little cat. Yeah, <laughs> just just do it. You know, okay. those those things are in the past, mm-hmm. and it was traumatic. Mm-hmm. But those are the things that become funny stories you tell your friends. Yeah, or, or dates eventually. You need to get to that stage where this becomes a funny story, as opposed to like. I'm a victim. <laughs> well, I don't think that's gonna be a funny story, but um, uh, no, but you're right because the thing is, like, I've just started to like want to date again, and then I'm like, ooh, I feel a different kind of vibe, and I feel like people are picking up on it. But then it was just like, you know, it was just like muscle memory almost because as soon as I felt like that person was interested, I was like, he's doing a bunch of thing that makes me think that, um, and then I was like, then. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's like, ooh, you remember last time this happened? Then this happened. So be careful. Like, you know, so it's almost like muscle memory, you know? Mm. So it's like, okay, I have to train myself to not do that. And it's like you say, like, you have to put yourself out there and and be, you know, just don't care. And I kind of did. So with the other guy who was the guy who said he had two Korean girlfriends, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> by the way, I think I did hit on him that night. And I think I came on a bit too strong, and I felt a bit say? embarrassed. What'd you say? 
I just, we were around each other and we were just talking about like. Um, was it in Sweden, in Stockholm? Yeah, it was here in Stockholm. Oh, at the rooftop bar. No, it wasn't at the rooftop bar. It was okay. at that karaoke place. Okay. That, what did you say to him? What did you say to him? Well, we were just talking and then like we were just kind of around each other and I was like, oh, you're going to You sing are eating me, right? my pussy, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you said? Is that what you said? That's why you can't. That, that definitely came on too strong, by the way. In a karaoke bar, you just go, You are eating my pussy, boy. And then, where did that flute come from? <laughs> <laughs> no, you just pop out from yeah. behind the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Eat her pussy, boy. <laughs> Could okay, you do that? So, sorry. <laughs> Could you be the guy that every time I try to flirt, you just pop out? Yeah. <laughs> and then I have condoms on in my pockets. Yeah. Here, I have 20. And the, Chine- have and the Chinese condom, Chinese condom dro- dwarf, you know? <laughs> I'm the Chinese condom leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese con- the Chinese condom uh, leprechaun, man. Eat her pussy, boy. <laughs> Throw condoms at them. <laughs> Oh my god. That's very funny. So what'd you say to him? What did, what did I say? say? Well, I was just being flirt I think I was being flirty. I was like, um, oh, we need to sing a song together. He was like, Oh, I'm not a good singer. Um and I'm like, Oh well, we'll do it together. It'll be fun. And then I was like, What's your favorite song? And he told me like a Swedish song. Um, and then like I'm like, OK. And then later on, I was like, OK, so what what song are we going to sing? And he's like, oh, I don't know. And I was like, maybe they have. And then I said the song that he talked about. And it's such a classic Swedish song that they obviously don't have it. So he laughed. And I made him laugh. <laughs> I made him laugh a few times. <laughs> Is okay. this really bad flirting? <laughs> It's okay. It's it's not bad, you know. Yeah. It's and okay. So, and I was like, okay. And then I was like, hmm. Uh, I think Mbop from the song. And then he was like, oh, I don't, uh, I don't know it. And then I was like, well, you better learn it because we're gonna sing it together. Oh, um, assertive. Yeah, but then after that, I was like, oh my god, why did why did I say that? And then I just avoided him for the <laughs> rest of the night. <laughs> I was so cringe. I felt so cringe. That's what you need to do sometimes. No, yeah. I think you're doing good, man. I think you're doing good. No, no but, more cringe. Well, but that was the thing because... I'll show you my DMs and you'll see how cringe it is. And then you see that it works. It does, yeah. <laughs> I did see his DMs and it did work. You're very efficient. But that was the thing. Like, with this, I was like... Be- because before that, I was like, it could have been just considered, like, banter. But after I said the thing of, like, well, you better learn it because we're going to sing it together. And I-, I think I whispered it into his ear. I was like... <laughs> There's no way, there's no way that he does not know that I'm interested now, that I'm, like, there's no way he's not aware that I'm interested in him. So I was like, this is so embarrassing. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna talk to him now. Whisper in the ear. Can you imagine at a karaoke bar? You're gonna learn it because I'm gonna sing it with you. We're gonna sing a whole new world together, okay? You'll be Aladdin and I'll be Jasmine and you can ride on my rug any day. You better I've, sing it. No, I've, and then we're going to sing Shallow, and I'll be Lady Gaga. You'll be my Bradley Cooper. <laughs> I felt like I felt like a predator when yeah. I did that. Yeah, if you don't sing, I'm going to do things to you that you'll regret. Oh, Nigel! Yeah, you better start singing now, boy. Yeah, so I, I felt really cringe after doing that. Yeah. You better sing, make me wet. Make me wet, otherwise... Like, please stop now. Please stop. <laughs> I just don't have any moves. I don't have any moves. It's my move. I go to a karaoke bar and I whisper in their ear, hey, <laughs> let's sing Mr. Brightside together. Let's be white people and sing Mr. Brightside. Or don't stop believing. <laughs> That's that song turn you on. That sweet Caroline turn you on when they go, ba, ba, ba. That's it turn you on. <laughs> Because if that turns you on, I know exactly the song that I can do for you. <laughs> Bop. <laughs> and you know what? That song is so hard to sing. <laughs> it was so hard to sing. I didn't. I realized I didn't know any of the words except for Bop. 
tip and top I do. It was so hard to sing, and it was so embarrassing because I just stood there and I was like, because it's so fast. <sighs> it was so bad. Oh god. Oh god. During dinner with your friend, you showed me your flirt move. My flirt move. Yeah. Because my friend told me. Uh, <laughs> Another of my friends told me they were like, "You're supposed to look at them, and then look down, smile, and then look back." So this is it. Okay. <clears throat> Wait. Say it again. <laughs> Listeners, it's quiet now because Evelyn's doing the move <laughs> straight down the camera. So Wait, check okay. out YouTube. Check I'll out do, YouTube. I'll do it again. Okay. Ten. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> That's the flirt move. <laughs> <laughs> Angel. It's not okay. Listen, that that move <laughs> is is a move, but you do it in such a deliberate way that yeah. it feels like you you've been practicing. Yeah, <laughs> it's the kind of subconscious move women do when when they're into a guy, but it feels natural when they do it in conversation or on a night out. Have you had that done to you? Yeah, tons. <laughs> <laughs> but not in your very deliberate practice. Okay. How do I do it? Like you, you, you first you take a deep breath. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're like getting into character. You're like getting into flirty every character. You have to say, okay. And then you have to compose yourself. <laughs> and then you have to like <laughs> You see how deliberate that is? It's so rehearsed and calculated. If okay. someone did what you did, I'll be like, this is she's a serial killer. Yeah. She's no. miming the motions of interest to trying to trick me going to go back to her place and that's, that's when the axe comes out. I'm miming the motions of interest. Okay, wait, I'll do it again. Okay, it's like... It's <laughs> 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 <That's> not good. <laughs> okay, wait, I'll do it to you. I'll do it to you. Oh. Okay, towards you. Oh, this isn't my good side, but okay. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> 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 oh god I'm enjoying this so much <laughs> uh, what are our sponsors because I'm getting really uncomfortable <laughs> our sponsors this week is uh, is Slendier <laughs> and they make uh, wait let me do this oh now a word from our sponsors oh, no. are, you gonna, are you gonna do the flirty yeah. move with the rice <laughs> oh no <laughs> Nobody's gonna buy it now. Nobody's buying <laughs> it now. <laughs> I think I did it really well. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so this week our sponsors are Slendier for the person on the go who wants a healthy life without compromise. <laughs> <laughs> They are not renewing the contract <laughs> after seeing this. Go to slendier.com and get your rice now. <laughs> Evelyn really needs flirting practice. I need flirting okay, listeners, practice. if you if you if you if you like Evelyn, please slide into her DMs. Oh and she's gonna ignore you for a bit, but persistence. <laughs> Evelyn has very low self-esteem, you know. She's very easily manipulated, but don't do it. Don't manipulate her. Manipulate. I'm not easily manipulated. I might be actually, yeah, I might be. Yeah. <laughs> I find it off I find it because I think I find it offensive that I come off as easily manipulated. Well, I don't know what to say. I... Okay, back to our sponsor. Yes. You, tr you tried it re yesterday, right? Okay, so the thing is, I had this yesterday. Mm -hmm. And because I'm trying to lose weight, I was like, okay, this is good. And so, like, it tastes... it tastes like, So it's made of konjac, um, which is an Asian, uh, uh, like, vegetable that yeah, I've, I've never, never heard, heard of. It of. Before, no, yeah. me neither. But it's ancient or something like that. It's really old. Yeah, apparently. I don't know why. Is this a new white people thing now? Is this the new <laughs> jackfruit? You know, a quinoa. Suddenly? Oh my god, are these white people? Are we? Are the sponsors white people? I don't know. I don't know who they are. I just talked to them over email. I don't ask their race over email. You know. <laughs> I would have. Dear Emily, what's your ethnicity? Before we proceed with this sponsorship deal, what's your ethnicity? <laughs> Should I do it again? Yeah, because I've dated two Korean women before. <laughs> 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 
just tell me your uh, what so emily what's your ethnicity <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it's um yeah, it definitely feels like a white people thing yeah. <laughs> to make <laughs> to make rice and noodles from Conjac. From Conjac. I want rice, but I don't actually want rice. Yeah, That's exactly. the vibe of this product. How can we sell like how can we sell this to um non-asian people <laughs> yeah. but still make it like a bit asian but like quite honestly though like it it was good i really enjoyed it because it's like it doesn't taste like rice uh and it doesn't taste like the noodles but it tastes like it tastes like you know the consistency is crunchy so it's a bit like algae you know oh like like seaweed seaweed so you know oh. like japanese sometimes you get a uh, seaweed salad in japanese restaurants it kind of tastes like that when you ate the noodles and also the rice like i really enjoy the consistency because it was like <coughs> it was really nice and then when you put sauce on because they gave us sauce as well yeah 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 and apparently those sauce like the sauce was quite good because they're made from italy they're made by like italian chefs is it made by konjac again konjac yeah. <laughs> so your whole diet is just konjac now the whole diet is konjac Oh no, they tricked us! Yeah. Is it the new keto diet, yeah. the Conjac diet? <laughs> the whites tricked us. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. We can't be. So, why are we. Why you, am I making this racial? Yeah, why are you making. <laughs> why are we know. making food racial? Please. I don't know. If you like what we just said, if you think it's up your alley, oh, trying God. to lose weight, go to slendier.com. Yeah. To buy a pack for yourself. We don't yeah. have any discount codes. We don't have you know. any discount codes this time. Also but- made it like rice. It makes spaghetti. And they also make vermi- vermicelli. They're all made vermicelli. of contact. All 10 calories per 100 grams. And so it's, um, it's, it's kind of crazy. Like a, a bowl of rice is 300 calories. You know, two or 300, yeah. I think. And a bowl yeah. of this is probably like 20 or 30. So yeah. like, like 10% of the calories. So I think... For listeners out there who are trying to lose weight but still want to eat yeah. carbs. Uh, th- yeah, it, it does... Tastes a bit different texture wise and taste wise to regular rice, but it's still good and it's a tenth of the calories. But I mean, like, I honestly, <laughs> it wasn't bad and I, like, I was full yeah. still afterwards. Yeah. So it was like, and it was really easy to make because, like, so, <laughs> like, rice, you have to wash it and you have to, like, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, we do it because we love rice. But this, like, you take it out. You pour it into like a sieve, you rinse it a little bit, and then you pour it into some hot water and you just let it like rinse for like a second. Oh, you have to use a colander. Hi, yeah. This rice need colander. Hi, yeah. Uncle Roger, Uncle Roger, this rice not for you. Not this for is, you. This is not Uncle Roger rice. Uncle Roger only eat real rice, the OG rice. The this OG. is. Don't know what conjac is. What Uncle is conjac? Roger, you're not trendy. <laughs> not trendy. No, Uncle Roger. Miss Evelyn trendy. trendy. <laughs> That's why Auntie Helen left because Uncle Roger out of trend. <laughs> Auntie Helen eat this rice. <laughs> Auntie Helen really like. Auntie contact. Helen, skinny bitch. <laughs> 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 if you want to be like Auntie Helen, go to slendier.com. <laughs> I hope you like our plugs, Slendier. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We made it racial. <laughs> Uncle Roger cut in on it. <laughs> and called. And we said, yeah, use a colander. <laughs> well, not a colander, but a sieve. Yeah, fine. I wonder the same thing. But I really enjoyed it. I uh, uh, And I'm probably going to have some more because they, they're going to send us more. Nice. They're keeping me. But, and speaking of Uncle Roger, you know, I, I get a lot of DMs from people saying that they like the skits, which I, you know, I work really hard on the video, so I'm, I'm glad and grateful that they like it. Uh-huh. But a lot of the times, they will message in, and then they would say how much they like the videos, and then uh-huh. they would tell me the tragic life story and how the vi- my videos got me got them through that. So they would say, I, hey, Uncle Roger, I love your videos. You made me laugh so much. I was having a tough year this year. My wife left. My dog died. I got cancer and lupus and COVID. <laughs> oh, my God. But your videos got me through those dark times. And I go on this roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, yay. I'm glad you like it. Oh, oh. And then, and then now I feel like I have to reply because they seen like, someone's reached a message yeah, on Instagram. Yeah, it says seen. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, okay. 
All right. Well, I'm glad you liked the videos, and I hope things get better for you. I don't need to be subjected to that, people. My life is hard enough, and I appreciate you liking it. You can just say you like it. You don't have to tell me your whole tragic life story. You know, if you are a refugee, keep that to yourself. <laughs> no, All right. I, just, I thought you were. I totally thought you were gonna go the other way because I thought you were gonna say, "I'm I'm better than chemo." <laughs> yes, I they cure cancer. <laughs> Uncle Roger and the orange polo. Who needs chemo? Just me. You just need me. Watch all the Uncle Roger videos. You don't need chemo. Chemo lets your hair drop out, but Uncle Roger is there for you. <laughs> I, yeah. I I'm mean, better than a vaccine. Who needs a vaccine when you have Uncle Roger and his orange polo? <laughs> As your lungs start to collapse, just watch an Uncle Roger video. Who needs a ventilator? No COVID here. <laughs> How would Uncle Roger protect against COVID? I just wear my face mask everywhere. <laughs> but that's nice. I appreciate the listeners who got, get in touch. Yeah, me too. I mean, I get a lot of that too now because... A um, tragic life story? Yeah, I'm so open about my Emily, mental health on the you podcast. You really inspire me to learn how to flirt. I've watched that video and I learned how to do the... Look down, then look up, and play with your hair move. It's a good move. It's so deliberate. It's a good move. It's one of those it's things you do move. subconsciously anyway. You don't need to practice it. Okay, okay. Yeah. I don't practice it. But it's, yeah, it's interesting because it's, it's more. Like, al uh, also, when you do that move and you catch yourself doing that move, don't tell the guys that you have practiced it. <laughs> okay? Don't say that. I'm not going to tell him I've practiced it. I don't know. You might think it's a funny joke. <laughs> oh, do you like that move? I practice it a lot. You want to see my next move? And he'll bring him to a karaoke bar. A whole new world. <laughs> yeah, oh, let's so munch on my carpet, you know. I'm very embarrassed by that. I'm, Rub me the oh. right way. Genies come out. You sing this with him. Oh, you mean that? Careless Whisper, yeah. Careless Whisper, no. But but we also had listeners write in with fan fiction, right? We and, have. And we, we might do... Oh, yeah, we are going to do a Patreon special episode of reading, the reading on the fan fiction. Yeah, because they, okay. they wrote the whole plot, man. Yes, yeah. they did. Okay, so in our last episode, we read a little bit like a post of fan fiction that a listener had just like come up with, and it was very funny. And so we encouraged uh, all of our listeners to write like a, a basically a script of a fan fiction K drama inspired like script between us. And they have I've seen the Google document, and it's very funny, but they don't have any dialogue. They just have like kind of the plot. So as you say, they've written out the plot, which is great. But you guys need to write dialogue if we're going to like act it out. Yeah. 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 You can clearly tell these people are professional screenwriters. <laughs> okay. And Evelyn's <laughs> judging you because she writes scripts, you know. She's written one <laughs> script in her life. She's written one. How many have you written? Zero. That's how many. <laughs> so Evelyn's totally judging you. Oh, my God. You know? I no, I appreciate it. You guys are very good. Very, it was very funny to read. But also, I have to say, a little disappointed that Hyun Bin wasn't in it. <laughs> and also, I just I cringed every time our relationship was mentioned because you guys put us together in this, and I'm like, Ugh, that's just that's just not the vibe here. That's just not hey, the vibe. We've bought condoms together. You know, we're oh, very, we're very intimate Nigel. now, I believe. I think even the people there could tell that they're not going to use this <laughs> together. This is very, like, this dynamic is... They probably think mm -hmm. we're siblings. Yes, exactly. Exactly. The two Asian people walk into, <laughs> walk into a shop together. Oh, this They sister. probably think I'm like I'm like under eighteen, I'm getting yeah. my big sister to buy cars. <laughs> this like they're like, oh this this uh, sister is buying condoms yeah. for her brother. But this sister doesn't seem to know her <laughs> shit either. She doesn't know anything. This is crazy. His underage brother is getting late more than her. <laughs> and they're like, 20 condoms? Yeah. Shit. Wow. 
Are they having a sex party later? <laughs> a COVID safe sex party. That's what we'll do. But so if you ever oh want to buy God. condoms in Sweden, don't do it. Bring your own bring your own stash. <laughs> bring your own stash. And that's it for this week's episode. See ya. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. I had to say, oh yeah. You, know? <laughs> you can just do it. I didn't remember to do it. <laughs>